The shogun sent him home. He allowed him to go home and see his parent. To see his, not par his parent, his mother. Yeah. Uh, and to see his siblings. And in fact, they were doing okay. Right? Um, but the local lord of his hometown, his name was Yamanouchi. He was so pleased to have Manjiro come back. It was such a celebration that he actually gave Manjiro the status of samurai, which was something that was unheard of. This fisher boy, I can't even say fisherman because he was so young, was promoted to samurai. Now, in Japan at that time, most people had only one name. They didn't have last names, except for the elites. The samurai and the upper class, they had last names. Everybody else had just one name. His name was Manjiro. But when he was promoted to, to samurai, he got to choose a last name. And so he chose the name Nakahama, which was the name of his hometown. So he became Manjiro Nakahama. So people don't have first last names? They didn't have last names, they just had first names. All right, can you imagine that? My name would just be Ken. Well, that'd be okay with me, I like Ken. <laughs> All right? All right, so he became a samurai and he took the name of his hometown. Now, this is where the story gets really interesting. And this is where the, the historical impact takes place. In 1853, an American naval officer named Commodore Perry arrived in Tokyo Harbor with four gunships. And they sent people ashore and they said we want to talk to your leader and they said we would like you to open your doors to us we want to conduct trade with you we want to establish relationships formal governmental relationships with you remember Japan was a closed country but Japan had never seen gunships like these before. And you can imagine they felt a little scared, they felt a little threatened. They didn't know what to do. They said, give us some time. So, Perry left, and the next year he came back with nine <laughs> gunships. Went back and said, well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna open the doors? No. In Japan at that time, there was exactly one person in the whole country who knew anything about the United States. Who was it? Oh, man. Manjiro. 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 Okay, and Manjiro was in Tokyo at the time. And the shogun said, hey, Manjiro, I want you to be an advisor to the Council of Nobles. The Council of Nobles was a group of people who advised the shogun and uh, basically helped him make decisions. Well, Manjiro's advice to the Council of Nobles was that they should open the door to, American, to America because Americans were industrious people. They worked hard, they were kind, they were generous. Uh, they, they, were, they were good people and they had uh, an amazing education system, an amazing uh, industrial society. So, on March 31st, 1854, a treaty of peace was signed between Japan and the United States. And Japan opened its doors to the United States, which actually meant it was opening its doors to the world. This opening of the doors led to the modernization of Japan, it led to the establishment of relationships between the United States and Japan. Uh, Japan opened an embassy in Washington. Gifts were sent back and forth between the two countries. The cherry trees that you see in Washington 
Uh, have you ever gone to Washington and seen the cherry trees? Those were gifts from Japan. And basically we owe all of that to the fact that Manjiro got shipwrecked, was taken to the United States, went back to Japan and then was the advisor to this council of nobles. Isn't that cool? All right. So Japan opened its doors. Now, uh, here's just a, a little bit of, of history. You can see two uh, pictures. The one on your left is an American postage stamp. It's got a picture of Commodore Perry, and you can see maybe the, the boats in Tokyo Harbor. Right? The one on your right is a Japanese picture of Commodore Perry, and you can see the, the, the big nose. Yeah. Right? The Japanese characteristic of Western people is big nose. Right, and you can see you can see that there. All right. By the way, notice when I have something from the internet, I have a picture. What do I have under it? Source. Have the source. If you if you ever take an image from the internet, right on that same page, you want the source. Okay. All right. Don't forget that. If you don't, it's plagiarism. All the pictures. Uh, if you have a picture, you want the source right there. Yeah. Now, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to have a references slide that will tell where the information came from. You need that, too. But for pictures, you need the source, right? <coughs> okay? Okay. Now, you might wonder, okay, what, what happened to Manjiro after, after that? And the climax of the story is Perry and the opening of the doors, right? But what did he do later? It's kind of interesting. He was the first professor of navigation and engineering in Japan. Remember, he studied engineering and navigation in the United States, and he taught it in Japan. Right? He also wrote the first English book for Japanese, to learn English. Uh, the title was something like, How to Learn English Quickly. <laughs> and you can imagine, he was pretty good at it because he learned it in two weeks on the boat. Right? I, I, I wish I had a copy of that book. Uh, now, in 1859, he established the whaling industry in Japan. <coughs> this is kind of important because these days, most countries have abolished whaling. But one country still does it. What country is it? Japan. 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 All right. So, so even the, that this issue exists today. Why? Because of Manjiro. <laughs> All right. Also, in 1860, he became the the interpreter for the first Japanese embassy in Washington. He was the only guy who knew English, so he helped interpret for the ambassadors. All right. Wouldn't that be a cool job? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, in 1870, he became the interpreter for the diplomatic delegation that was sent to New York. Now, this is a rather interesting story. Um, a, a group of Japanese went to New York City. New Yorkers had never seen Japanese before. So this, uh, this delegation of, of Japanese was being carried through the streets of New York, and people were hanging out the windows, and they were wow, what's that? I've never seen that. It drew a lot of attention in New York City, and Manjiro was the uh, interpreter there. Right. I actually read that in a, uh, a book of the history of New York City. It was a, a major event. Uh, and finally, he became an English professor at the youth, well, it, at that time it wasn't Tokyo University, but it was the school that eventually became Tokyo University. Tokyo University is the most prestigious university in Japan. So you can see he contributed to the uh, prestige of that school. So. Just to summarize, and uh, your presentation should also have a summary, right? Uh, what we see 
is that Manjiro's story is a story of disaster. You know, his father dies. He gets shipwrecked on an island and he nearly dies. This disaster gets turned into blessing. He gets saved. He goes to the United States. He gets educated. He brings that education back to Japan. He opens the doors. All right? That's the serendipity that I told you about. All right? It's also a wonderful story of timing. Right? Life is all about timing. Yeah. If you're in the right place at the right time and the right person sees you, your life becomes completely different. Right? What would have happened to him if that cook hadn't said, I want to make turtle soup? <laughs> right, right, right. Can you imagine? And you know, what would have happened if uh, Whitman was a different kind of person and, and Majiro didn't like him? You know, he would have stayed in Honolulu with his friends and, and none of this would have ever happened. What would have happened if Nari Akira killed him. Had, had killed him? You know? Everything would have been completely different. The right person, the right place, the right time. And to find gold in California, so many thousands of people went there and most of them didn't find gold. Yeah. He did. Magic. Yeah. It's like a magical story. And it's true. It's all true. Oh, that's serendipity. Yeah, it's serendipity. Yeah. All right? And you see that Manjiro was able to bridge the two countries. And I hope that we also will successfully bridge our two countries. And here's a, a small, poor fisherman boy who impacts history in an amazing way. Well, if he... What about you? Anything is possible. Right, Nari? Right. Anything is possible. All right? Huh. But sometimes it takes disaster first. <laughs> No, but this is, this is very interesting. And the last thing I want to say is, uh, to this day, the, the house that he lived in in Massachusetts uh, is a museum. It's called the Manjiro Museum in Massachusetts. Where is that museum? In New Boston? Boston? Uh, um, I forget the city name. It's, it's near Boston. It's not far from Boston. Okay. But you can look it up online. Okay. Uh, you can look it up online. Uh, this article, uh, in 2009, it became a museum that was funded, actually not by the United States, but actually by Japan. All right. So, and here are my references. All right. Yes. And I just want to point out what your references will look like. It'll be APA format. You'll have references on the top of the page. Uh, notice that it's in alphabetical order. B comes before J, which comes before K, right? Yes. Um, you'll notice that it's in APA format. We have the hang indent. Do you see that? You know what I mean by the hang indent? Yes. All right. And how do you get you know the right order of things? You go to APA on the on the internet. Go to uh, look up APA format. Google it. You can find uh, what, what I what usually comes up at the top of the list is the OWL, the online writing lab. Go to APA format, and it will give you examples. Follow those examples exactly. APA. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of picky, but but when you get practice, and that's what I want to do in this class, I want to give you practice so that you can do it in the writing classes. Okay. Plus, remember we have the award for the best references. All right? So try to get these right. Now notice I have three references. You need to have at least three. All the references, like if you want a picture and in the beginning, you want the references again? No, no. If it's a picture, if it's only a picture, then you put the source right there on that page. Okay. It doesn't have to go on the references. So what's the references? The references are where I got the information. Story. The story. The information. Also, all the information in the end. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The information is on the ref references in the end. 
Is that okay? Yes. All right. Now, what do you think? Do you have any questions? Um, what about uh, the man who adopted him? The man who adopted him. Yeah, um, I, I actually have not researched whatever happened to him. Um, but he was a good man, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, you know, he saw the potential in Majiro and, and he, he brought him home and he got him educated. Very good man. And what did happen with the Majiro family? Uh, all, all I know from the research that I have done is that they were okay when he visited them. I don't know what happened in the end. And in fact, I don't even know when and how Manjiro died. Um, My guess is he lived to a, a nice old age and, and he died like that. Um, okay. But that's not really important to our story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so again, what you notice here is that you have to filter the information. I could make it longer by adding all that information, but it's not really central to the point. All right. right. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Do you know whether he faced some kinds of discrimination here in America because he was the first Yeah, you know that that's a that's a really really interesting question. My guess is no. Uh, Number one, because the Whit, uh, the Whitfields were reputable people in the community, and number two, because he was only one. Yeah. Right. I, I think the discrimination it's comes. Special. The discrimination. Yeah. Right. Right. The discrimination comes when when many come, and then you have this group and that group. That's that's what generates discrimination sometimes.